Hey everyone, Dan Tagashi here. Today is July 26, 1.40 p.m. Japan time. As usual, I want to do a quick world news report, what happened during the last 24 hours. Every day I wake up and I read about 10 different newspapers all around the world, and I try to summarize what I think are the most important pieces of news, so you don't have to read the papers if you don't want to. For those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan Takahashi, former Wall Street guy. I uh, created my own fund with a partner when I was 26, sold my stake in that fund when I was 30, then traveled the world about 60 different countries and came back to Tokyo where I was born about seven months ago and just started YouTube, got about 300,000 followers on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Very, very thankful, guys. Thanks so much for your support. I uh, just started this English channel just a few weeks ago, so hopefully you'll follow me going forward. As usual today, even though the markets are closed, once a week I like to do sort of a uh, overview of what happened in the market. So do a quick overview first of what's going on in the stock markets, then uh, the most important economic news, political news, society news, and at the very end I'll answer your questions in that order. So let's get started. Here we go. So markets all around the world are closed today. However, on Sundays I like to do a quick overview analysis for the month of July so far for the month. How are things performing? So overall for the month of July, the Dow Jones is up 5.8%. S&P 500 is up 6.9%. NASDAQ is up 6.2%. And S&P TSX Canada is up 5.3%. Uh, again, for Europe for the month of July, we see Eurostox 50 is up 3.3%. FTSE UK is down 0.6%. Sort of interesting that FTSE is down. Uh, DAX Germany is up 6%, roughly 6.2%. CAC France is up 1%. IBEX Spain is up 1.6%. In Asia Pacific, again, for the month of July, we're seeing the Nikkei is up 0.9%. However, the Topics is down 0.9%. Hansang Hong Kong is up 0.63%. CSI China, 8.9%. So even with the decline recently, it's still up 8.9% on the month. ASX Australia is up 2%. And MSCI Asia Emerging Markets are up 4%. So overall, uh, I like to do a once a week, I do a review of what's going on during the month of July. Uh, it's interesting to me that one, uh, number one, the FTSE UK is down while almost all of Europe is up. Uh, also, China is still performing quite well. And also notice that the NASDAQ is performing this time not as strong compared to the S&P. So this is sort of bucking the trend, as we call it on Wall Street. So even though on the year the NASDAQ is up 24 percent, while the S&P is only up 6 percent this month, the S&P is actually outperforming the NASDAQ. So that was important to know. In terms of economic news, obviously, it's Sunday, so not much is announced. But this week, guys, is probably one of the most important weeks uh, in the last few months in terms of economic news. This, there's a ton of stuff coming out. Number one, U.S. earnings season is going to continue uh, with companies such as Alphabet, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, P&G, Pfizer, Gilead Sciences, all going to be reporting the results. The Fed's monetary policy meeting is going to be also very keenly watched. Uh, and then the GDP data is going to be announced for U.S., Eurozone, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and finally PMI for uh, the China. Uh, these are all huge pieces of data. Uh, the GDP, the final number, the, the second quarter GDP numbers, this is going to be very, very key. Everybody's uh, watching this very closely. Of course, the Fed, what the Fed does and says, this is going to be watched closely. And the key tech companies will be announcing earnings. So please keep a watch on that. Moving on to society news for the day, uh, looking at the number of new daily cases that was announced for July 25th, uh, 258,896. So down a little bit from the last few days. However, uh, note that we are still above 250,000 now for several days in a row. And clearly we are in the second wave of the coronavirus and the daily new deaths are starting to pick up slowly but surely. Uh, again, looking at this by country, we're seeing that the USA is still top. Uh, Brazil is still about 50,000 and India is holding about 50,000 per day uh, very, very smoothly, I would, I would like to say that it's going up very smoothly. Brazil, there's a bit of a uh, misanomaly going on, I would say, where the prices sometimes the numbers go up and down sometimes, but India is very smooth. Other types of political news, society news today. I talked about this yesterday, but the new E-Trade retail accounts, monthly retail accounts, huge numbers of accounts were open in the month of March, meaning that lots of people were getting engaged in the stock market, probably specifically also due to the fact that they were also in lockdown modes and not much to do at home. So after watching Netflix and Amazon Prime, I'm sure some people were also starting to open uh, stock trading accounts. Um, other pieces of news, uh, Chinese listings surge on Wall Street, even despite all the tensions. There is a ton of new IPOs going on right now uh, in terms of uh, listings on Wall Street. So that I thought was very, very interesting. Florida passes New York for the number of virus cases. 
Uh, that's very, very sad, but it seems again that the Florida situation is only getting worse. Uh, I talked about this before, but this week is going to be very critical and uh, one of the busiest, newsiest weeks of, I think, the last few months, perhaps this year. Uh, Senate Republicans are also going to unveil their stimulus proposal, which these proposals, I really think, are going to be the key in determining how the stock market probably reacts going into the presidential election for the next three months. Uh, also note, in terms of weather report, Hurricane Hannah, a big hurricane is sort of uh, developing in the southern Texas region. Uh, Spain, there's uh, sort of a lot of fears of a second wave coming in Europe at the moment. Um, other types of news today. Uh, you know, again, talking about Gavin Newsom and his, and his team in California. He's the governor of California. Uh, he's got a star-studded cast, yet they can't seem to solve the reopening situation. And California is still in a pretty dire situation in terms of coronavirus and reopening their economy. Uh, sort of an analysis on that. Um, otherwise, in terms of uh, Fox News, seeing here that Trump administration's stance on it has had a wake-up call for the communist China after the consulate raid. So, again, I talked about this yesterday, but... Um, the consulate being uh, raided uh, in Houston. Now it's going to be closed. And in retaliation, China is going to close the Chengdu uh, U.S. consulate. So tensions are flaring. Uh, he held a news press conference, uh, again, saying that Houston was believed to be a spy hub. This is on top of other pieces of news I was talking about yesterday that a Singaporean man was uh, pleaded guilty to being a spy on behalf of China. Also in San Francisco, the Chinese uh, consulate there was, uh, well, let's say, there was a, there was a Chinese uh, citizen there uh, who did not abide by the visa laws, and uh, the, China, the San Francisco consul was hiding that citizen there. So a lot of tense flares are rolling up right now. Let's see what happens. But again, this is the uh, news that's going on for the day. So guys, overall, um, looking at all the news on the day, I'd say that the most important news is the fact that, well, next week or this week, however you want to call it Sunday, there's going to be tons of news coming out. Uh, you guys should be very, very aware of what's going to be happening, especially, I think, GDP. When this news comes out, it's going to be all over the newspapers across the world. There's going to be tons of tons of economists analyzing it. I will also analyze it. I've been watching GDP for a long time. Uh, there's lots of ways to play around with GDP and the number and also the how to calculate it is a little bit different depending on each country. So I'll be seeing how this is calculated as this number, guys, is going to have a huge impact on the election, presidential election. So I am also just in disbelief and the fact that I, I, I want to see what happens. Um, people, I think, are forgetting the fact that the unemployment numbers in the U.S., they were wrong for several months in a row. And uh, the Bureau of Labor basically announced that they were wrong and they had to revise several months in a row. So during the coronavirus, unemployment numbers have been wrong for several months in a row. Now, the GDP numbers have a big reflection on unemployment numbers. So I have a little bit of skepticism in my heart that the GDP numbers are actually going to be correct. Uh, and I'm also even more skeptical just to see if there's going to be a little bit of tampering with the numbers or not. But hopefully there's not. Hopefully they are accurate. Hopefully they actually reflect the true nature of the economy. Uh, and again, of course, it'll be interesting to see the tech earnings coming on, uh, especially uh you know, companies like Apple and Amazon. I think there's going to be a lot of focus on this. So, guys, keep a note of what's going on. Uh, keep a note also of, um, you know, the performance between the NASDAQ and the Dow, etc. In terms of questions and comments today, uh, I got lots of questions and comments, especially about the performance between uh, the U.S. financials, the banks, and QQQ. Now, guys, just as a reminder, I made a video recommending buying XLF and shorting QQQ as a short-term hedge trade. This is called a statistical arbitrage trade, right? And just looking quickly at the chart here, uh, this is the uh, basically the trade that I recommended so far. It's been performing quite nicely, actually. Been very, very nice. And the reason why is mainly because QQQ has been falling, the NASDAQ has been falling, while XLF has not been falling so much. So these types of hedge trades can sometimes be very, very beneficial in your portfolio. So please keep in mind, guys, put these hedge trades, statistical arbitrage trades, sometimes into your short-term investment horizon. You don't have to play all my ideas, but once in a while, you may want to dabble on them because they're very different from holding uh, positions long-term. So, guys, that's about a wrap for the day. English subscribers, please do me a favor and send my channel link out to any of your buddies and friends. 
I'd very much appreciate it trying to get new subscribers. Also today, I've been getting tons of questions about the dollar, uh, currency questions, the euro, the yen, all that stuff, Bitcoin. So I'm going to try to wrap it all up into one video, especially what's going on with the dollar yen right now. Uh, I've been watching the dollar yen for a long time. So looking through the technical charts, I think finally right now today, uh, not today, the last few days, that there's been a bit of a change in trend. So I'll report that to you. Hopefully you'll watch my video uh, later on today. Thanks so much guys and have a great day.